same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements, from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, the source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! minutes after nine o'clock it is thanksgiving morning and this is the portion of the morning dedicated to our veterans the veterans are not in the studio this morning and we made a decision to go live rather than playing a rebroadcast but i do have some veterans related sound bites that i wanted to share with you um so thank you first of all to our veterans um my brother tom my nephew christopher you're out there somewhere. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. And all of the veterans out there. Joe Martone is a veteran. Joe Jr. is a veteran. Yes. Thank you for your service. And uh, all of you. The Galen Unold. Galen Unold is a veteran. Thank you, sir. All, all of the veterans who come in here um, are every Thursday. Um, yes. And they've been doing this for years. Some some of whom are no longer with us. And, yeah. Uh, some of whom died this past year. Um, one who comes to mind is uh, Don Harrison, who used to come in here all the time on Veterans, uh, on the Veterans, on, on Thursdays. Yes. On the Veterans News Show, and he died this year in a tragic motorcycle accident on Highway 441, just north of town, I think, yep, right? he got hit. It wasn't his fault. So thank you to our veterans. Now, there there is a um, an app, and you can, I, I wasn't sure if you could use the website, so I looked it up, and you can. It's StoryCorps, S-T-O-R-Y-C-O-R-P-S, it is not veteran exclusive, but you can you can label it, tag it as a veteran's uh, soundbite, and it will be uh, categorized that way. What this is is a way for you to record your family's history with an app on your phone because your phone has the amazing ability to record. Mm -hmm. Good morning. How you doing? Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You too, sir. You Happy too, sir. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> you too. Yay. The mall's not open right now. Oh, he knows that. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so anyway, I wanted to uh, make sure that you know that we definitely appreciate our veterans. And um, so let me play some sound bites. This one is uh, uh, some troops that are currently serving overseas, and they are uh, wishing Thanksgiving to their families back home here in America. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me get to it. Here we go. My name is PFC Dontavious Cutno with the 101st Airborne Division. I'm Major Kyle Upshaw. From Delta Company, 82nd Civil Affairs Battalion. My name is Special Joseph Harrington. I'm thankful for, for my friends and family holding it down back at home and my girlfriend Nissa. This Thanksgiving, I want to say that I'm thankful for all the small things that we take for granted. I'm thankful for serving my country and my family back home. I love you. This Thanksgiving, I want to say I'm thankful for my six-year-old son, Henry. I love you, buddy. I can't wait to get home and see you. Happy birthday. 
Can you imagine that? Wow, that's just heartbreaking. Six years old, yeah. he's away from his son. Um, well, thank you for your service. All right, so ne- there's this sign. I did not get that sound from StoryCorps.org, but you can go there and you can upload or you can use the app and do it automatically the stories of the people in your family and have them record their stories and upload them. The, they will be forever, I guess, archived in the um, Library, of, Library Congress. of Congress. Thank you. So let me play one from StoryCorps. This is uh, one from a veteran named Barry Romo. One month younger than me, and we were raised like brothers. I enlisted in the Army to go to Vietnam. That was my intention. And he didn't want to go in the military, but he got drafted anyway. They sent him to Vietnam, and he ended up being in my brigade. I became a lieutenant. And he begged me to help him get out of the field, but I couldn't help him. And my nephew got me out of Vietnam. One day, I got back from a patrol. They told me, your nephew, Robert, has been killed. He was running to save a friend of his who had been wounded in battle. And he was shot in the throat enemy fire was too intense so they couldn't retrieve the body and he was in the sun for 48 hours a staff sergeant said why don't we seal the body permanently that way your family they remember him as he looked like when he graduated from high school I was then sent to escort the body home I had white gloves on and a uniform with my medals, but I felt dirty. You know, I thought I was going to die in Vietnam, but I didn't have to go back there. I had my ticket punched by my nephew's blood, and I felt that I failed him, I failed my family, and... uh, I still feel guilty to this day. That that was from StoryCorps, and uh, it it is interesting that there's music at the end of that, so uh, I'm just guessing that when StoryCorps gets these messages, they don't, they they do probably put some work into them. I don't don't think that they simply um, take them verbatim, because I was just thinking as I was saying that, that I must be wrong, because there there have got to be... um, some pranksters out there, you know, up to no good. Yeah. Um, so they probably check the legitimacy or feel if they're legitimate This or next not. sound bite is from uh, Army Specialist mm-hmm. Tom Woods. We were all really excited for you to come home and finally be able to have our I'm life. Sorry, that's obviously not Tom. That must be his wife. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let me, let me start that over again. Sorry about that. Uh, when, Tom, when Army Specialist Tom Woods left the military, he suffered from PTSD and alcoholism. So this is his wife talking about him. We were all really excited for you to come home and finally be able to have our life as a family. But when you got home, I didn't get that feeling that we were all going to live happily ever after. When I got out of the military, subconsciously, I pretty much checked out. So I'd say I did give up. I remember you'd been drinking, like you'd been doing a lot at that time, and you just left. So I was upstairs with the kids, and I heard some really heavy knocking at the door. I remember walking downstairs holding Blake, and I saw you pounding on the door, and then you started kicking the door, and then you were screaming, and I was like, Tom, calm down, and you were looking at me, but it was almost like you were looking right through me and I called the police and I just explained to them that something's going on he's not being himself what made you stick around through it all I knew that if you got some time to deal with that that I would get Tom back and I think that's what made me stay was that I was in love with with you and I just wanted you back you know I, I truly felt like finding the right help for you It was a matter of life and death at that point. What do you remember about the day that I came home from rehab? 
When you left, Blake was seven months old. And when you came back, he was almost two. I was really worried about just if you guys would bond. And when we pulled up, you were standing out front and I walked over there with Blake. And I remember he put his arms out to you and let you hold him right away. And just that whole day, like somehow he instinctively knew that you were his dad. And I remember a lot of my fears had been put aside seeing the way you guys just automatically loved each other. And you just looked like a different person. You looked like the Tom that I met years before. I feel like I'm in a better place. Not everything's perfect, but it's a lot better than it used to be. All right, we'll take a little break and um, be right back. You're listening to WOCA The Source. It's Thanksgiving Day, and this is the Veterans Half Hour. They are not here. Robert and I are in their stead uh, playing some clips from some veterans who have served us. Thank you for your service. We will be right back. Deployed in support of Operation United Assistance. I wanted to give a shout out to my wife Ashima and my daughter Simran, currently in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is uh, Major John Simpson. I'm from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I want to give a shout out to my family and say Happy Thanksgiving from Liberia. Hi, my name is Sergeant First Class Ashley Kiel. I'm from Madisonville, Kentucky. I'm currently in Monrovia, Liberia. I'd love to wish my family a Happy Thanksgiving in Tennessee and Kentucky. Love you guys. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine mixed with clouds today, a gusty wind, and a brief shower in spots for Thanksgiving Day, the high 77 to 81. Partly cloudy tonight with a gusty wind and a brief shower, low 61 well inland, about 69 though along the coast. For tomorrow, partly sunny and windy with a brief shower or two, high 77 to 81. Or sunshine Saturday, high 77 to 81. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Bunner. This holiday season, do something different. Show your special attention with a green and growing gift from the fabulous greenhouse at Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens in Ocala. Step inside this authentic and very rustic greenhouse and see a world of gifting you've never seen before. I'm talking perfect items like indoor palms and ferns and exotic plants, large and small, hanging plants and holiday decorations of all kinds, lavish topiary, the finest florist quality gardenias priced from just $9.99 and even those dramatic Norfolk Island pine. And of course, Trulio Cala's largest display of poinsettias all in one place. If selecting boggles your mind, make it a Bob Wines gift certificate, which gives you $25 to $75 free, depending on which certificate you present. Bring yourself, bring everyone to the greenhouse at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens. We guarantee you'll get the Christmas, we guarantee you'll get all the crisp spirit you need. What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozenet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. What you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. It's not just about squeezing a couple of lemon slices into hot or cold water. We need to grate it in a half teaspoon of lemon zest. Boredom and excess energy are the causes of many pet behavior problems. So if your dog's chewing furniture or barking excessively, try taking them outside for an hour a day. You can raise your chances a recruiter will contact you by 1,000% by posting links to industry news on your LinkedIn page at least once a week. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Career Source, Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source, Citrus Levy Marion, and learn how they can help you. 18 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. This is a live broadcast on Thanksgiving Day. Hope you are having a good Thanksgiving morning. I hope you've got family to go be with today. Uh, I know, Robin, you'll be with your 
brother and your mother and your daughter and yep. your, and uh, my son-in-law and go. my brother's friends and there you go it should be it'll fun be fishing be and fun. eating and it'll be fun so we are in uh it, while hank and his guys are not here today having thanksgiving with their families we thought we would uh instead of playing a, a rebroadcast we would play some sound clips from some uh, veterans retired marine corps major donnie dunnigan who was the voice of bambi in the 1942 Disney film. Really? Yes. Tells his his wife, Dana, about hiding his acting credits during his military career. Oh, was he afraid people would make fun of him for L being Bambi? Let's find out. Let's listen to this. I got a draft notice in 1952. Korean War still going on. I'm going to do my duty. I think I had 13 promotions in 21 years. As I remember, it was a Marine Corps record at the time. Did anyone know that you were the voice of Bambi? During the Marine Corps, no chance. I never said a word to anybody about Bambi. Even to you, when we first met, I never said a word about it. Most of the image in people's minds of Bambi was a little frail deer, not doing very well, sliding around on the ice on his belly. Mother, look! What's all that white stuff? It's snow. Snow? I am a commander in Marine Corps boot camp, drill instructors, hundreds of recruits I'm responsible for. I just thought to myself, I don't think I want all these young Marines <laughs> to start calling me Major Bambi, and I kept my mouth shut. They would have too. When did your comrades find out? One Marine learned about it a month before we both retired. I worked for him three times, twice in combat, and I'm one of his guys. A major audit was going on on the base. I am up to my neck in duties. He called me in at 5.30 in the morning. I will never forget. I go in his office and he says, Dunnigan, I want you to audit the auditors. I had never said a disrespectful word to this man in 20 years. I said, General, when do you think I am going to have time to do that? Then he looked at me, pulled his glasses down like some kind of college professor, <laughs> and there's a big red top secret folder that he got out of some safe somewhere, had my name on it. <laughs> he pats this folder, looks me in the eye and says, you will audit the auditors, won't you, Major Bambi? <laughs> <laughs> so how has your life been different than you imagined it would be? Oh, golly. Well, I have some holes in my body uh, that God didn't put there. I got shot through my left knee. I got an award or two for saving lives over time. But I think I could have been appointed as the aide-de-camp in the White House. It wouldn't make any difference. It's Bambi that's so dear to people. But I, I love it now when people realize this old jerk is still alive and was Bambi. And I wouldn't take anything for it. Not a darn thing for it. Oh, wow, that is a great story. Wonderful I love that. story. I love that one. Wow, that was cool. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this is an eighth grader named Jenna Power, and she spoke to her seventh grade social studies teacher because he had served in Iraq. And she asked him, what was the hardest thing that ever happened to you in Iraq? What was the hardest thing that happened to you in Iraq? Being separated from my family for that long. You can't even begin to explain that to someone who hasn't experienced something like that. Were you ever afraid when your dad was deployed? Oh, yeah. I was pretty young, but I had nightmares about it. And when he missed my birthday, like, that just, it got me. I'm sure he knows exactly how you felt about that, because for him it was a drag, too. What was your job in the Army? I was an intelligence officer. So that kind of helps me in the classroom, because I was trained on how to read body language and understand where people are maybe not telling me the whole <laughs> truth. And that comes in really helpful as a teacher. So why did you decide to become a teacher? Because I wanted to continue to serve. I think it was a great decision that you chose to be a teacher. Well, I appreciate that, Jenna. Thank you. But it was a transition to think about things in different ways. I remember walking into the first school dance with flashing lights, loud music, and I found myself flashing right back. It was almost too much for me. Wow. So, how did you know I was a veteran? Right away, I kind of knew, I guess, because my dad does things a certain way, and you had, like, the same mannerisms and stuff like that. You know, even the way you walked, it was really weird. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that, though, because I purposely didn't mention it. Mean. But you knew. That's good. <laughs> Do you have any advice for me? My advice to you is be brave. 
you know, let's face it, there are some students who sit in my class and they do what I tell them to do, but you were never satisfied with that. You always said, but wait, that was my favorite phrase from you, but wait, I want you to ask those questions. Why is it that way? Why do we do things that way? And to me, that's what sets people apart is that desire to know more. And you do that. Well, you definitely made a difference in me, so thank you. You look like you're about to cry. Are you okay? I am about to cry. Oh, sorry. But that's okay. Real men cry. Wow, that's great. That's chills. And you know, that's pretty observant of that young lady because she didn't know he was a veteran, but she noticed the way his mannerisms and that told her everything. Very cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. We're celebrating Thanksgiving. We're uh, thanking our veterans, and uh, I've got some more sound bites from some vets who are thanking their families back home. I mean, not some vets, but some current soldiers, some current troops. Here we go. Hello, my name is Father Tyrone McKinney, and I'm stationed in Liberia, Africa. I want to give a shout out to my mom and dad who are in Fort Hood, Texas. A shout out to my grandparents and my uncles and my cousins as well. That's in Tampa, Florida right now. Yeah, have safe holidays and have fun. I'm Specialist Mario Cosby. I'm from Lynchburg, Virginia. I just want to give a, a happy Thanksgiving to my mom, uh, my little sister, and my little nephew, uh, little Eddie. Uh, I'm thinking about you guys, also to my grandparents, also all my family out there. I uh, just want to say happy Thanksgiving from Liberia. The, uh, f- the story I want to tell you is a few years ago, um, we were um, we had we had an idea for a Veterans Day uh, contest here at WOCA, mm-hmm. and the prize was going to be a um, a portrait that I would do. Yes. For the, some of you know that I do portrait uh, artwork, and so we had a, a random drawing, and whoever got whoever was the winner became the uh, the recipient of the of the portrait, mm-hmm. and uh, the winner was a lady named Anne. Yes. And I did a portrait of her husband. It was beautiful. And uh, then I had a call from somebody who said, you know, you should do one of Hammett Bowen Jr. And I had not heard of Hammett Bowen Jr. Now, most of you have, because by now, his name has become very well known in Ocala, if it hadn't been already, uh, because the, we have a school named the Hammett Bowen Jr. Elementary School. Yes. Um, what is that area called? Uh, down 200. It's oh, yeah. I don't recall. But any, anyway, it's near it's the, f- near the Freedom, Freedom Library. Near the Freedom Library. Yeah. And anyway, so um, it's a middle school. I, somebody gave me a photograph of Hammett Bowen Jr. They told me his story of mm-hmm. how he threw himself on a hand grenade in Vietnam, died, and saved three of his fellow soldiers and uh, was awarded the uh, Medal of Honor mm-hmm. uh, as, as a result of that. Um, the, the only one in Marion County. The portrait that I did was um, presented to Hammett Bone Sr., Hammett Bone's father, um, and it was a very, very touching moment, uh, as it was when we, d- when we presented the, the portrait to, to Anne. Yes, um, oh, very touching. But in, anyway, so the, the, when Mr. Bowen... Before he passed away, the veterans here in Ocala made a really strong effort, and and I will say that Hank Whittier and his guys w- Dean. were instrumental. I- Maury Dean, for sure, yes. were instrumental in what's a good word? Working, <laughs> working mm-hmm. uh, to have this new school named after Hammett Bowen Jr. And there was a lot of resistance to it. Yes. I can't articulate to you what the resistance was. I think I knew at the time, but I sort of forget. But They didn't want a school name. They didn't want any name, they no said. No name on the school right. at all. But they meanwhile, there's a an, a, a Jones, the a, a doctor. N.H. Jones. N.H. Jones has yeah. a name. and that Yeah, I remember that now. Exactly. But anyway, so Hammett Bowen Jr., long story short, they, they did school name the board. school the Hammett Bowen Jr. School. Mm-hmm. Before Mr. Bowen died, he donated the portrait that I did to the school. Yes. In fact, he was there at the ribbon cutting of the school, mm-hmm. as was uh, Maury Dean and Hank Whittier, and yeah. uh, I, I believe uh, Sue Mosley was there, yes. and, uh, other other dignitaries who were either in office at the time or who had been instrumental in the, um, what am I trying to say? The, the, the campaign to the name campaign. the campaign, yeah, it's a good word. Hammett Bowen Jr. So anyway, so that portrait now hangs in the lobby, of the school for those who who didn't realize and mm-hmm. he, so he's one of our heroes and I think the only Medal of Honor recipient yes. in Marion County from what we understand I so, I, we so I have another story I want to play for you uh, this is um, 
and Hammett Bowen Jr. was 19, I think. Who's, yeah. He's very young, yeah. 19. Yvette, let's see, Yvette Benavidez Garcia and her husband, Rene, remember her father, Army, Sar- Army Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavidez, a Medal of Honor recipient who spearheaded a daring rescue, saving eight fellow soldiers during the Vietnam War. Let me play you that one f- right now. The injuries were so severe that they thought he was dead. So they put him in the pile of the dead, and he was trying to muster up enough strength to get this medic to notice he was alive. And all he could do was spit in the medic's face. Oh. That's when the medic realized this man's alive. And as a child, I remember sitting in the back seat behind him. All of a sudden, I could see blood dripping from the back of his head. And I would say, hey, Dad, you know, your head is bleeding. He would reach back there and literally pull out a piece of shrapnel that was making its way through his skin. Wow. And he would just Mm -hmm. throw it away. You could hear the click. What did you think about my dad? My first impressions of him were at age 16. He just looked angry. Because you were dating his daughter. (laughs) Probably, yeah. I remember the way he walked. I mean, it looked like a person in pain. Do you remember when you'd come over and watch a movie and him sneaking up on us? He tried to sneak up on us, but it was pretty hard for him because you could hear him shuffling his feet. And I'd whisper, don't look now, but we're being watched. Yeah, I'd go over there and he couldn't move fast enough to get away. So he would act like (laughs) he had just gotten there. Right. Hmm. You know, I was young when he received the medal. And at the time, I really didn't understand why he was getting it. But I saw a lot. And now as an adult, I think back and my dad really suffered. You know, he was quick to correct you if you said... How did you win the medal? He would say, I didn't win this medal, I earned it. Hmm. All right, we'll continue our Thanksgiving Day morning. That was our veterans segment of the morning. We'll be right back. That's pretty touching stuff, pretty powerful stuff. You're listening to The Source, WOCA. Happy Thanksgiving. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy, never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mayo treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. This is James Snyder inviting you to join me each Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. Squaretrade.com If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy and no longer worry about my performance. New Mayo treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. 
December 5th from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m., the Appleton Museum of Art invites you to Free Family Day celebrating the Urban Family Holiday Exhibit featuring two floors of decorated trees, the Dickens Village, and other favorites. 1 till 3 p.m., take carriage rides around the museum and have your photo taken with Santa. Art activities all day in the art space, so bring your family for a day of free holiday fun at the Appleton, located at 4333 East Silver Springs Boulevard. For more information, visit appletonmuseum.org. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer up charge. Undercoding, rust proofing, factory service.